All right, new episode. It's only been like a week since the last one. Uh, nothing, nothing new has happened. I haven't done anything yet. Um, what I'm trying to do now is just suss out the car and figure out all the quality of life stuff um, that I need to fix, all the auxiliary things. I don't have anything more mechanical on my list that I need to do to this car um, other than tie rod ends and an alignment. But at the moment, the alignment, the front end, at least the toe in, toe out, is perfect. It is Gucci. It is ideal. Um, so I'm not going to touch that until I start hearing squeaking from those uh, tie rod ends because the boots are blown. Um, shit, I might even, I got to look into just buying new boots. Um, I think I might. I think I might just be able to get replacement boots and just throw them on there, um, in which case that would be awesome. Because uh, the tie rod ends are still fine, the alignment's good. Um, and if I can just get new boots on there, even though I have the tie rod ends already, um, it's going to be $100 at least for an alignment. Um, which would, which would you know, correct any issues I have with camber. But at the moment, I don't, I might be, um, I can't really tell. I don't think I have any issues with, um, you know, the, the camber um, might be out a bit. Um, but we'll see. Uh, this thing's got a lot of body roll, so a little bit of outward camber might be might be good. But I don't want to wear through my tires. Um, so anyway, we'll get an alignment at some point, but I'd rather not do it right now. Because um, so far, after I fixed the, the steering, I don't want it. That, it's all good. It's perfect alignment. Straight down, straight as narrow down the road, so I don't want to touch that. Um, but I may get some boots uh, and just pop those tie rods off and replace those. Um, but anywho, I digress. Um, there's uh, three big bugaboos with this car as far as reliability and quality of life goes that I'd like to address, but I want to just ease into that. I don't want to just go start throwing money at it already, although I've already kind of done that a little bit with two of them, but um, three of them. Uh, the first one is the fuel system. Um, I have not taken this thing below half a tank, well, much below half a tank um, since I started driving it. Uh, it's got a like 21 gallon fuel tank and I keep five gallons in the back, but I hear that if you, you run these things down to the last couple of gallons, um, I know my screen in the tank is clogged um, because I saw it and I cleaned it last time and I did not flush the tank properly. Um, so if I bring that too far down, the static pressure, the gravity, the static pressure pushing fuel up to the, um, the pump will decrease and the thing may starve for power and stall out, in which case I have to add... Um, um, diesel to the tank and then prime it and if it gets too bad we won't be able to run the car enough to run it off of a um a jerry can in the front um so yeah don't want to do that um i do have a new line for the rear and i can um at any point if i can get the thing down low enough take that line out drain the diesel or pop that line off of the the main um, hard line drain out all the diesel um filter that diesel um and then take the screen out, clean the screen, and then just flush five gallons of diesel through the car, like one gallon at a time, and just get a forklift or something and shake the car, um, just to try and get as much crud out of there. I've been running fuel system cleaner, so I'm hoping everything's suspended at the bottom of the tank and it's not like still stuck to the walls. And we may just have to do that a couple thousand times or so uh, until it's until it's good. Um, but I don't want to do that on the side of the road. And I really don't like getting covered in diesel fuel. And it's a real pain in the ass to get that screen out without getting covered in diesel fuel. Or getting it all over your CV joints. Um, that also reminds me of another thing. Uh, I think something might be up with the, the rear end. Because I have like a ooh, 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 vibration coming from the rear of this car. And it's either a half shaft or um, like one of the bearings. One of the carrier bearings. Um, and I'm not going to do anything about that. Um, unless I grab one of those CV shafts and go like this and hear it rattle, but so far they're rock solid. So I think it might just be like bearing. I'm hoping maybe it's a wheel bearing. I think it did rear bearings though. Um, no, I didn't do rear bearings. I think I did front bearings. Um, or I repacked the front bearings. I don't think I did anything to the rear bearings. So it may just be a bad rear bearing. That would be nice. Um, we'll see. That's still a pain in the ass, but we'll see. Uh, it's much easier than getting in there and getting CV, paying for CV axles and tearing apart the whole pumpkin and everything. Um, getting that fucking drive shaft out, but anywho, um, we'll address that when it becomes an issue, uh, when the transmission blows up. Um, but anyway, uh, that reminds me of another thing. I'm going to do an oil change and a transmission fluid change on this thing. Um, after I hit about a thousand, fifteen hundred miles on it, um, because I don't like the oil that's in there and I don't like the transmission fluid that's in there and I have all the stuff sitting on the shelf. I just wanted to get some miles on it, make sure the car was reliable before I throw any more money at it. Um, so in the ne next month or two, um, I've already got about a thousand miles on this oil, I think close to it. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a full fluid change again. I'll add some transmission additive cause this thing, 
this thing just clunks into into gear so i think the bands are worn out and i don't know if there's a way to adjust the bands if there is i'll do that um but uh i definitely do need to replace the fluid because it's not the ideal uh transmission fluid for this car um and i know that the additive can help it out a little bit so i'm hoping that'll improve the transmission shifting um, but I think it's really the vacuum modulator, um, and I may have to dive into that German rat ne rat's nest at some point, um, because I feel it's shifting way too early. It shifts at 2,000 RPM. I would really prefer if it shifted to like 2,500 or 3,000 when I was at max load. Uh, but it could just be that it's not making enough power for it to recognize uh, that I'm doing that. But then again, I'm also probably putting a little bit too much faith into this like proto computer system that's in here. Um, but eh. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, the two real, real bugaboos that really aren't bugaboos, they're just a whole learning curve that and pain in the ass that I just really don't want to get into because they're not necessary, is the air conditioner and the clear coat. Um, I have a new dryer and a new um, expansion valve as well as two cans of flush, a bunch of R134A and R134A conversion kit. Uh, the trouble is, is that this has an overly complicated, like, pre-computer HVAC control system. It does not just have switches on the dash. Um, so I'm not really certain whether that works. Um, so I might not even be able to get the compressor to engage. And I may have to go in there and just hardwire in, like, a, an AC circuit. Like, off of, like, the high pressure and low pressure switches, whichever it has in here. Um, because it's not going to be running... Um, because R134A is a higher pressure um, for the same amount of cooling as R12 was, and this is an R12 system. So I may have to wire in my own like um, pressure switch thing to just make sure it doesn't blow up. Um, especially if the thing doesn't work, because it's just it's just a wheel. And if I put it to cold, and the, the temperature sensor in the car says it's just borked out, and it says it's negative 32 in there, it's never going to run the compressor. Um, but, yeah. Um, so the, when I got this car, the compressor is, is still there, but the belt was unhooked. So that, to me, tells me that either the car was trying to run the compressor all the time, and so they disconnected the compressor so it would stop, but it would have been just easier to replace the, um, what you call it, uh, unplug the, the compressor clutch to do that. But they, my uncle may not have known to do that, so I don't know. Um, however, to me, that seems to indicate that the compressor just blew, and they wanted it to not run because it was fucking gravel. Um, but I spun the thing over and I didn't feel anything wrong with it. The clutch bearing was not gone. Um, I don't know if I was able to spin the actual compressor over, but, um, we will have to take the compressor off to drain out all the PAG oil or whatever oils in it, mineral oil or something, and replace it with ester oil because you can't run mineral oil with, um, R134A. You could run it with R12, but not R134A. So I'm going to have to drain that out and replace it with ester oil. And when I do that, I'll look for chunks and see if it's like just a gray slurry of steel. Um, in which case we know the compressor is bad and I'll have to just go buy a new one. It's like 300 bucks and I just don't want to spend it. Uh, before I know like all the lines are good and the computer system works and all this other stuff, I don't just want to throw $300 at this thing and then find out that it's a whole rat's nest and everything else is broken. Um, however, uh, the, there's a hole in the dryer, so I have to replace the dryer, period, and I might as well exp replace the expansion valve because it's like 10 bucks. And I need to flush all the lines because the compressor blew up. There's a bunch of metal everywhere, so I'm going to have to pull the condenser out, flush that, um, ideally I'd replace the condenser with an R134A compatible one, but that's like $300 as well. I ain't doing that. Um, it'll just be slightly hot. Um, but yeah, I need to flush all the lines. I need to replace the train, the, pull the dryer and the expansion valve, then flush and the compressor, flush all the lines and then pull out the condenser, flush that, and then refill everything up with the correct amount of ester oil, which I'm going to have to figure out what that is because I'm finding conflicting information online about that. Um... Then put it all back together, then add our R134A valve conversion kit, um, put the belt back on, on the compressor, replace the compressor if, it, if it's trash, um, then put pressure to it, or, and start just dumping R134A in there, see if the compressor kicks in, and if the interior HVAC control system still works. If it does, great. Um, then we just fill it up to 75% of what the pressure would be with R12, and it should just run. Um, which would be nice. It's not going to do that, but that would be nice if it did that. Uh, and the, if the interior system does not work, we're just going to have to wire in, you know, two pressure valves in series going uh, to a switch on the dash, which then runs power to a solenoid, which then runs power to the clutch for the compressor. Um, or we just run some big fat wires. Actually, no, we're not going to run power through those, those sensors. That's astute. We're not going to run amperage through those sensors. That's a dumb idea. But anywho, I'll have to do that at some point. And I have, I have most everything I need to do that up to the point of replacing the compressor. I have the belt. I have the, the dryer and the expansion valve and I have the flush and I have the R134A and the conversion kit. I just haven't done it because I don't need to and it's October now and it's not hot anymore. Um, 
well not super hot uh, the last thing is the clear coat this car i've been saying there's not a lick of clear coat left on this car but i lied there's actually clear coat left around the license plate as you can see there's actually some shine left um but it's really just there um and nowhere else in the car because paint's oxidized and just it's just coming off and i can't get this mold to stop and i'm assuming that's because i have oxidized paint and there's just always a fine layer of dust because i live on a sand hill and a mile down a dirt road so the car is just always covered in a fine layer of dust and and it's always dewy out here so it's always humid and wet so i can't stop the mold and lichen from growing um so i have to get a clear coat on this thing to stop that shit um, but before I get a clear coat on it, I'm going to have to get all the oxidized paint off and I'm going to have to polish the paint because once I put the clear coat on it, it's going to be a real bear to get that off. Probably have to repaint the whole thing. Um, so I need it to be correct when I put the clear coat on or it's not going to take, it's not going to work, it's going to look like shit. Um, so I have to decipher a bunch of um, um, a whole boomer lexi lexicon um, and navigate a narrow maze of not wasting all my money on crap to make my car look 0.5% nicer because I really don't care that much. I just want some shine on it and I want it to stop growing mold. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a whole rabbit hole and you can waste a lot of money on a car trying to make it look nice and a lot of time and blow out, blow out your elbows and your, and your shoulders. Um, and, uh, I do not give a fuck uh so yeah i've got to i've got to wade through that list of false information just to find out exactly what i need just to take the oxidized layer off degrease the entire thing smooth it out a bit um and just compensate for all the chips in the paint and just i have some poppy's patina wipe on clear coat just degrease it wipe it on but I have further compounding um, issues which is um again i live out here on a sand hill there is always a sea breeze it is always humid humid um, I have to put this thing in the garage to, in order to clear coat it and work on it because it will not stay clean otherwise. And even if I put it in the garage, it's still not going to stay clean. So I'm going to have to get like a cover for it or something um, or at least, or do everything in one foul soup. The other thing is I have hard water, so I can't wash this thing here um, because I'm going to have water spots and I'm going to have mineral deposits, um, which means I either need to go fill up like a 220 gallon water tote uh, from the, the local municipal spigot and wash the car with that uh, using like a pressure washer or something um or i need to take it to like an automatic car wash and get the thing waxed drive it all the way back here and then hit then degrease remove all the wax and then hand wash it um on a nice dry sunny windless day which will be very hard to find um park the thing in the garage get it to dry out somehow keep the dust in the garage from getting on it and then do that. But I also have to do rust treatment on the exterior before I can start doing that because I have these rust holes over here and I do not want to just clear coat over rust. I need to come in here and do a rust treatment. I've already done it once before, but it's starting to come back out. So I just need to get in here, sand all of this, sand down in these rust bubbles, do a rust treatment, and then paint over it with like a paint, a white paint over rust if I can get one of those. And that shit ain't cheap. Um, and then I also need to tape off all the chrome. I kind of want to polish the metal first. I'll probably do that because that's a little bit less complicated. And if I scratch up the paint uh, before I clear coat it, I don't care. Um, it'll just it'll just eat in the oxide layer. But I just want to clean up all all the the aluminum and all the chrome and all that stuff. Um, then I'll have to tape it all off. And then I'll have to do the wipe on clear coat. And hopefully once I do that, then I can. Um, ceramic coat the entire car including the windows and the trim and the plastic and everything i'll have to do a back to black on, on the plastic and all that other stuff it's just going to be a whole pain in the ass and a whole lot of work it's going to be really dusty when i'm doing it so i just want to be able to just have everything lined up nothing else on my plate and just can't snap but just everything back to back to back and have this thing done in like a weekend um and not have it sit um but in order to do that, I got to get the Corvette running and driving so I can push it out of the garage and drive it around and stuff. Um, and I'm waiting on a radiator. been waiting on a radiator for three months. And I'm just finally fed up with it. I'm getting a refund on that damn radiator from Eckler's because they're saying it's shipping directly from the manufacturer. And the manufacturer has it in stock and it's been three months and tell me it's back ordered. So I'm just going to get a refund from them and just order straight from Champion. But anyway, I digress. That's a whole other project, but it's a pain in the ass. Um, it's holding me up on multiple fronts. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are the big bugaboos I'm worried about, is the fuel system clogging up, um, 
I need to go in and do full fluid change on the on the engine and the transmission to, to put in the proper fluids. Um, going to a, a 15W40 with Lucas for the oil, proper diesel oil, not Walmart shit. Um, and then not Walmart transmission fluid. We're going with Valvoline um, Transmac Max Life, Valvoline Max Life with a Transx additive, which should hopefully be a much better uh, transmission fluid for this old transmission because um, it's got all, all the Mercedes compatible um, whatever certifications that it has and the Walmart stuff does not. I'm not even sure if the Walmart, I think the Walmart stuff might be like Dex or Merc 4 or something. I don't know. But anywho, um, and uh, yeah, um, then I need to do the, the AC and I need to do a clear coat. Probably I'm going to do the clear coat before anything else before I touch the fuel. Well, I'm going to do the, the fluid swap and then probably the clear coat will be the next thing once I get the Corvette running because um, AC is not a priority right now. Um, but another complicating factor is there is a 300 SD in the local scrapyard with parts that I can snatch from it. Um, so I kind of want to go in there and just steal all the AC stuff and a whole bunch of interior trim pieces and all these other things that I need from it before it gets sent to the crusher. I, I'm, I might need to call them and just see what it would cost for a parts car, but it'll probably be like $3,000 in which case I'm not going to do it because it's not worth it. I, I know of at least two other, um, W123s in the local area, one which is on blocks and probably hasn't been driven in 15 years that I might be able to talk to the owner and, and you know, buy it off of them or something. And maybe we'll, just, we'll, it's too nice for me to steal shit off of it, but I don't know. We might be able to get little tiny things or something. Um, if it's a total junk or the engine might be blown or something like that, it could be a good, good, um, replacement transmission. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, that's currently where my state of mind is. I know I've just been standing here talking for 15 minutes, but, uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm planning to do with this thing. But before we do any of that shit, I'm just going to drive this thing around and just see what falls off. Um, uh, oh, yeah, and another another thing is I need to put sound deadening in the car. Um, it, it's loud, and there's holes in the weather stripping, and I'm not going to do anything about the weather stripping because I can't get the weather stripping. Um, but there's holes in the floor pan and no carpets and no sound deadening in there right now. But I can't put anything in there because I've still got the rain leak issue on that side. Um, I think I've sussed it out over here after I did the um, the sunroof. Um, but I still have the issue over there. So I, and I don't have any undercoating left on this floor pan. So I need to get in there with scrape up all the remaining, um, uh, undercoating over here and over here until it gets down to bare metal, then do a rust treatment, then do a paint over rust paint. Um, and then, and then I need to expand the, um, the drain holes, then put over, then the, the paint over rust and put like nails in the drain holes when I paint it so that the, I can push the nails back out. Um, and keep my drain holes, um, then put down sound deadening, and then I can probably put the carpet back in, um, just over the top of the, um, sound deadening, and just maybe do, do some sort of cofferdam or something, put some sort of plastic liner on this side, so that when the water comes down in the A column, it goes onto the floor and not into the carpet anymore, um, but we'll see, that, that, we may get to that sooner rather than later, because this car's loud, and if I take it anywhere at highway speed, I gotta put earplugs in, um, because it is loud, um, but that's probably mostly the weather stripping. There may be some kind of exhaust leak between the turbo and the pre-muffler as well. Um, because I feel like I'm hearing that way more than I should. But it's probably because there's whole, like four holes in that floor pan. But anyway, I digress. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to get driving this thing and we'll come back when I'm doing something or I'm busted and dead on the side of the road. All right. Well, we actually have one more mechanical thing to do that I just remembered because I bought it and forgot about it is a uh, lug bolts. If you recall in the last episode, um, I tried testing this thing up on jack stands after I replaced the flex joints and um, did some work um, to the drivetrain and whatnot. And I forgot about the whole, you know, lug bolt thing um, because I'm so used to dealing with lug nuts. And uh, I may have had these run in all the way and they may or may not have slammed into the hub and a bunch of little fiddly bits inside the parking brake housing. And uh, I may have bent five lug bolts. So I may have purchased um, 10 new Dorman uh, lug bolts to replace those. And I'm just going to do the rear because I'm cheap and they're like $4 a piece. And I'm not, I just, I'm not fucking spending $80 on lug bolts. Those work. They'll be fine. Um, and so I'll save all these and they'll be spares. I'll take the, the bent ones and put them somewhere else. And I'll take the, the good ones and I'll stick them um, probably in the back of the car. Um, just in case I get ugged ugged or something. But yeah. Um, don't don't run your lug don't let the OCD take over and run your lug bolts all the way in and uh then put the car in drive and then say why is my hub not spinning and then floor it because uh, you'll bend a lug bolt um thankfully it seems that the parking brake 
uh, system is fine and if it's not it's still working and uh, I don't have any replacement hardware because I couldn't find it otherwise I would have done that and the shoes by now so uh, we're just going to pretend that the springs didn't get smacked by a bunch of lug bolts and uh, yeah I'm gonna pop this thing up here on the jack real quick and just spin those off spin those back on and uh, we'll have shiny new lug bolts on the rear and probably at some point I'll do the front all right well the shiny new lug nuts are on and uh, these are the offending ones. This was the really bad one. And um, that one actually boogered the hub up uh, pretty good on that side. Um, but we're going to ignore that. Um, one of these also kind of boogered the hub. And one just had a little nick in it, I think. And it just it didn't really like uh, going in all too well. But the other other two, I just ran them in and out with the impact gun a couple times. And the threads cleaned up. That one is, um, she's got some damage. So, um, yeah. Anyway, they came out just fine. It's just, I was afraid that, you know, one of the bolts was bent or something like that. Or, you know, and the, these things are so damn hard to get out because they're just old and rusty, even though I put never seize on them. So uh, these shiny new ones should hopefully come in and out just fine. And now I have spare lug bolts because I didn't have any before. That was a little worrying. Anywho, I'm going to put this back down, torque it all down, and uh, that's it. That's done. Alrighty, I'm just out here running errands and uh, figure, you know what? Let's treat the Merc to something nice. We're going to take her through a car wash, and we're going to see whether or not that comes off or not. Um, but that should hopefully get some of the green mung off of it, and uh, maybe I'll look at make it maybe I'll make it look a little bit better. We'll do we even we'll even get the wax treatment unless it's like five dollars for wax or something. I don't know how much car wash costs. I haven't washed my car in five years, but we will take her to a nice fancy automatic car wash so I don't have to interact with anybody because I'm antisocial and autistic. So let's do that. Well, this is certainly exciting and different than I expected, but uh, we'll see if the uh, see if the emblem survives at the very least. So far, no water in the car, so that's a plus. I don't know if you can see it, but it's still on there, bent back just like it's supposed to. So that's good. It's trying to rip my windshield wipers off. Well, that was exciting. Um, sunroof pan filled up a little bit so it's kind of dripping onto my back um but car's probably clean we'll look at it at some point man mount pleasant just makes me uncomfortable i don't know I, I feel like i'm being watched all the time it's probably because their police force is a bunch of fucking cunts but um other than that um i always just feel like um everyone's staring at me because i look like a homeless vagrant redneck um which is incorrect, I'm not homeless, but I am a vagrant redneck. Um, but yeah, too many, too many nice cars um, and too many, too many skinny blonde girls walking around. Um, gives me the heebie-jeebies. It was pretty cringe, not gonna lie. Uh, North Charleston, I, I don't feel like I'm gonna get arrested here. I just feel like I'm gonna get stabbed. Um, but So a slight improvement, I think. Uh, good old Scummerville. I haven't missed it a day. However, I have missed the liquor store formerly known as Bill's. All right, we're back. And uh, yeah, she doesn't look too much better. A little bit better. Um, tires shined up real nice until I drove down my sand covered road. Now they're all covered in sand. I don't know why I paid for the tire shine, but it looked nice in the parking lot at Walmart. Um, yeah, she's got to feel the wax. It's got a bit of a sheen to it now. Uh, it was not worth $22, but, um, yeah. Yeah, I think I regret doing that. But, anyway, uh, it'll look nice for a week or two. Um, all the paint's about gone now off this side. The moss has just eaten through the paint now, so mm, is what it is. All right, so we're fixing to do one more big stress test with this thing. I've got to get up at the taint tip of dawn tomorrow and drive all the way clear to the complete opposite side of South Carolina. Uh, last time we went to Aiken, which was a 270 mile round trip. This time we're going to Chesterfield, which is a 360 mile round trip. And uh, we're going to see if she can uh, she can do it. I'm fairly confident now, um, but we're still not going to take any chances. Um, so we're going to load her up, and uh, I'm going to go to bed. And uh, we're going to get up at 4 a.m., drive 4, mi or 4 hours, 180 miles, uh, talk to some people about some plants for 8 hours, then turn around, drive four hours home and then die or in, I'll die at some point there's either either when I get back or in between I don't know I haven't figured it out yet okay it is officially uh dark as dicks out and uh we're gonna make the four hour drive to Chesterfield I am not looking forward to being stuck in this thing for eight hours today um but yeah um new moon 
can't see shit. Where the hell's that handle? There it is. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try something new rather than running with the uh, earplugs. I've got my old Razor headset, um, and we're gonna throw this on, and uh, we're gonna listen to podcasts. And uh, I don't like that headset. The the actual sound quality is actually really good, but uh, it's dark in here. Um, let me open that back up. But um, you know, it's a uh, it's deaf. Like, like, you can't hear shit. Like, someone could be talking to you from, like, five foot away, and you can't fucking hear anything they're damn saying. Um, so I tried it yesterday, and it actually worked really well. I just plugged it right into my phone, and um, I'm hoping this will be, uh, you know, loud enough, loud enough to uh, drown out this car, and I can listen to a podcast. And when I show up, I'm not deaf, because I have to crank the fucking volume up on my phone all the way to, like, 95%. But, uh, well, we'll see. Wish me luck. There's a lot of... All that to look at. All right, well, it's cold and it's rainy. And I'm in a short sleeve rayon shirt. Um, but we're at Carolina Sand Hills National Wildlife Refuge now, which is only about 20 minutes away from where I'm supposed to be and five minutes late. Um, but it eh, doesn't matter. Just stop taking piss in the woods. And uh, yeah, I like this place. This is a cool spot. Not generally going to drive three hours and 45 minutes to get here, but it's a cool spot. Merck's holding up great. Um, the driveline vibration is now kind of migrated a little bit more towards the front, and it happens over 60 miles an hour now. Um, still totally um, bearable, by all means, but, um, you know, also, this guy keeps getting moved, and I don't know who the hell keeps moving it, but it just, like, moves on its own. Um, it's interesting. But anyway, it bothers me, because it's the only thing I see out the front of the car. It hit a bug. It's all smooshed. But, uh, no issues. I'm gonna get back on the road and I'm gonna show up probably 10 minutes late now and uh, talk about some plants. I'll lock the door because you never know when there's vagrants out here. You know, I'm not worried about the bears, but it's the woods hobos. You never know when a woods hobo is gonna come out. All right, well, there's some there's some prairie in progress and uh, there's some, some fancy wood carvings. And uh, that's it, we're done with my symposium thingy, so we're heading back to Charleston. Goodbye, Chesterfield. They got hills! Sorta. Of. Oh, is this thing using the microphone on my head? That would suck. Let me know. Well, my neighbor's dogs are like fighting a fox or something, but we're back. And the Mercedes, still here, survived. And uh, there's a dead crane fly. And I don't know what the hell that is, but uh, it's just a. It's just dirty dangling there off the grill. Um, I don't know what the fuck that is. Ectoplasm probably hit a ghost. I'm pretty sure it hit a bird at some point. I think it was a whippoorwill or something. Anyway, didn't hear the impact. Just saw the bird and then the bird one there. And I'm pretty sure I didn't miss it. Um, but anywho, uh, that was exciting. We made it all the way back. No shoes at all. I think 360 something. Whatever it says. Yep. Just a hair under 360 miles on the clock. And, uh, no issues. Nothing at all. Not a problem. I mean, hell, it's better than Jeep does. I know you can't see anything, but suffer. Uh, yeah, nothing more to say. But now I probably have about 1,500 miles on the on both the oil and the transmission fluid. So might as well swap both of those. Um, get, get onto a better oil for both. I know the transmission uh, definitely shifts way too early, and I'm hoping going to a properly spec um, transmission fluid will improve that slightly. I don't have high hopes, um, but, you know, it's better than whatever the, the non spec fucking, whatever it is, Dex3 Walmart shit I got in there. Well, it's probably not going to change much, but uh, I'd much rather go to an actual name brand uh, 15W40 um, rather than Walmart 10W40. But anyway, eh, we'll do that at some point this weekend. But she survived the trip. No issues at all. Um, but I do, did realize I need a piss jug because um, I'm getting old. I got to piss all the damn time. Um, yeah, 30s are going to hit me like a train. But anyway, I digress. Um, I'm going to go eat food and go to bed because this is a some 30 at night already. All right, the Merc's up on blocks. Let's dump some goo and see what we can do. So, I have two different selections of beautiful goo to add to the Mercedes. Um, we're going to do the engine oil first just because it's the easiest and most straightforward. I'm not, I don't know whether or not I want to do the filter yet or not. Um, probably not going to do it. 
um, just because it's only got 1,500 miles on it, and I'm probably going to change the oil again at like three or 4,000 miles. And the filter can definitely take 6,000 miles, so I don't think we're going to do the filter. Um, I'm going to try and reuse the copper crush washer. should be fine. Um, should be able to get at least two uses out of it. I'm not worried if it leaks a little bit, but, you know, I don't anticipate it's just going to, you know, blow out. But anyway, I digress. Um, crankcase takes like seven, seven and a half uh, quarts. Um, so what we're going to do is add one of those, then one of those, and then top off the rest with that. So that should be even at five, so another two quarts, and then we'll check the dipstick, and then we'll check it again, and um, that should be good to go. Um, then we're going to do the transmission. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to drain the torque converter. And we're going to try and get as much out as we can, but we're not doing a full flush because I don't care enough. Um, we are going to um, drain probably six quarts is going to come out of this thing doing this um and we're going to replace the seals on those um on the torque converter and the drain pan bolts because i got the seals and uh we're going to add one of these and then 24 ounces of this which is a little bit over two thirds um because you add one one ounce of that uh per um 10 ounces of that so it works out that you would add one of those for 10 quarts we have a i think the transmission has a seven and three quarter quart capacity. So we're gonna add 24 ounces. Um, and yeah, and then that'll give us, what is that, most of a, that'll give us our like 0.6 or something. And so we'll add one of those, one of those, and then probably two ounces out of that, or two quarts out of that. And that should be all we need. And um, I'm hoping that will help me with uh, the shifting because the shifting in this thing is garbage. Uh, and additionally, the Walmart oil I got in it is not the correct spec, but this um, Transmax, I believe does actually hold um, a, equivalent uh, Mercedes spec uh, for this transmission. So this should hopefully improve the shift quality of the transmission and maybe it'll shift at like, you know, 3000 RPM um, in, you know, the low gears instead of at like 1800, which is really annoying when it's under load and it just goes burp, 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 and then you're in fourth gear and, you know, things gutless. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get to that and uh, hopefully I should not have any issues. The only real problem I'm anticipating is trying to get the torque converter lined up because I don't have another person to, you know, come up here and turn the power steering pulley until I get the thing lined up. So I'm going to have to like turn that thing, uh, you know, eighth of a turn, go down there, check, turn eighth of a turn, go down there, check, and go back and forth and blow my knees out. Um, but I'm going to shut up and I'm going to get to it because uh, I got other things to work on. Like that piece of shit today. And uh, I don't need this oil change to take four hours. Yeah, all right. Oil's done. As you can see, Right about where it needs to be, more or less. Seven and a half quarts. Uh, might be a little over full, but we're not going to pay attention to that. Um, one quart of Lucas and six and a half, that's six, yeah, six and a half quarts of Chevron D Low 15W40. And um, that should be good to go. Um, yeah, um, thankfully the, the torque converter um, drain bolt was actually lined up pretty damn close. So I had to rotate the engine like a, just a little bit of a touch, and we got it lined up. And uh, now we're going to start draining the transmission. And, um, yeah, um, I'm really hoping that stuff does something because um, if it doesn't, i got to mess around with this vacuum what's-it-do-job hickey-do-hickey-jobber thingy guy. And uh, I don't want to do that. Okie dokie, transmission fluid's out. Ignore the fact that it's black. Um, that's just because uh, it's mixed with diesel oil because I didn't clean the whole pan out. Um, because why would I? Because it's just about fill it back up with oil. But, um... It's nice and red. It was perfectly crystal clear when I drained it out. I was really expecting there to be a bunch of sludge, but nothing came out of the pan other than just clean red fluid. So that's good. I was a little worried there was a ton of clutch material in there because uh, if you remember, I got stuck between first and second gear when the kick down switch on the floorboard got stuck. Um, so with the, when I checked the fluid after that, there was a bunch of clutch material on it. So I was really afraid um, that there was gonna, something was going to be roasted in there, but transmission fluid looks you know, like it has 1,500 miles on it. So. No worries there. Um, we're going to dump one of those in there, 24 ounces of that, and then top her off with the rest of that. Um, I have no idea how much fluid is left in there. Um, I think I might dump it into that uh, engine oil um, jug and uh, just see, you know, pour one of those in, then fill that back up to the, the forecourt, and then fill that up and see where it settles, and uh, then we'll use that to determine how much to add back in, minus 24 ounces. Okie dokie. So we filled that guy all the way up to the four quart mark and then we dumped into there and then now we've drained it and as you can see we've gotten, well this is at a slight grade, but we got a 
five and a half quarts out of the transmission torque converter. So I've added, actually did the math and because I'm adding this, I'm actually adding less of the um, transmission fluid. And there's actually, I was adding three quarters of that bottle, three quarters of a quart. So anyway, I reconfigured the math and um, we added uh, 22 ounces of that. And then on top of that, we added however much it was, four and three quarter ounces of that, which add that together, you get five and a half quarts. And so that's just in here percolating. And uh, nothing we can do other than to, you know, check the dipstick and just make sure it's on the stick um, and make sure it's not coming out the bottom and doesn't look like it is. Then uh, take her off the blocks, roll her off the ramp, fire her up, drive her around, come back and uh, check the oil while it's warm. And hopefully we're right in the middle, but uh, I added exactly as much as came out and it was perfect before. So it should be hopefully perfect now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okie dokie, well we're taking her for a test drive. Let's see if she's got more pep than normal. No, not really. Still seems like she's in fourth at, you know, 35 miles an hour. But uh, we'll get on the road and warm her up and uh, see if anything's different. I'll put her in park and see whether the shift points are any better. Um, it feels a skosh better, but just a skosh. I can't really say yet. Well, just basically the same. Um, the engine seems to be just a hair quieter at idle than it was before with this thicker oil. And um, the transmission seems to be just a skosh smoother um, when it just absolutely fucking dumps into the next gear uh, or just dumps down in the first and clunks. Um, that That is noticeably better, but it's still not great by any means. Like, transmission maybe like a 10% improvement and the engine maybe of five. Um, so yeah, I mean, peace of mind, I needed to change the oil and the transmission fluid because neither were ideal for my situation. Um, so it had to be done and, um, you know, run the thing for 1500 miles, work out all the sludge and gunk and other crap and then flush it. Um, that seems to have, you know, done a little bit of something going to a slightly better oil, but still not perfect, but, um, better than it was. So yeah. A little disappointing, but anyway, I can live with it. We'll see how it does highway speeds uh, with protracted, you know, heat on it. All right, so um, I filled her up and we only got 26 miles per gallon uh, after that, you know, four hour one way, four hour one way trip. Um, so I think we might have some kind of fuel system issue going on and my money is on injectors. Um, you know, this car sat for what, close to 16, 17 years. And, um, you know, I ran the thing on kind of shitty off-road diesel that had been sitting in there for 16, 17 years. And uh, all of a sudden we got this lope at idle. Um, and, you know, everything else seems to be working just fine. Um, so I'm thinking I've just got a plugged ejector or an injector that's just pissing one fat diesel stream out. And it's just going straight into the cylinder, getting compressed, barely burning, and then just getting pushed right out the end. Because the other day I stepped on the throttle and I saw white smoke come out the back end. Um, cause it was at night and I had someone tailgating me, but I could actually see it. Um, so I think I'm down a cylinder and I don't think it's compression. Um, because it seems to be fine at really high RPM. The engine is smooth and everything like that. Um, where if I was like down on compression or something like that, um, I feel like it would be way more noticeable. I think I've just got a fat piss stream of diesel coming out and it's just not atomizing. And you know, it's just got this whoa, 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 at low RPM. Um, so yeah, I'm going to replace the injectors. And uh, actually, Rock Auto was incredibly cheap to just get to get straight brand new OEM Bosch injectors. It was like forty-seven dollars a piece, whereas like everybody else is selling them for like at least you know fifty-eight. Uh, and fucking Pelican Parts is selling them for a hundred dollars. So I just picked up a set of you know five as well as some uh, new heat shields, and we're just gonna replace the injectors, and we'll see what that does. And um, you know, if it's a drastic improvement, great. Um, there's the problem. Um, and then we'll have the original OEM set lying around and uh, we can actually rebuild those with Monarchs if we ever feel like in the future because a set of Monarchs is like 170 bucks and we're not at that point yet because I'm still 100% certain you know that's you know what's going on with this and I don't want to DQ the car for you know a month to send off injectors to get them rebuilt or order injectors and try and rebuild them and then accidentally lose a washer or some shit and have to buy one and all that other shit so we're not going to rebuild anything we're just going to flat out replace them and then we'll keep the old ones and then we might rebuild them with some better injectors in the future. Um, additionally, I've got that rear end like vibration and clunk and I think I don't have any grease or oil in the CV shafts um, because I was able to grab that rear CV shaft and move the shaft and it was like clunk 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 
So I think we're totally out of grease in these CV shafts. Um, and I'm glad I realized it now because we've got like what, like 2,000 miles on this car and uh, probably should have grease in your CV joints for 2,000 miles. Um, so hopefully they're not roasted. If they are, we'll have to replace them. That's not the end of the world. It's not like, you know, having to, you know, rebuild or resleeve an engine or do a bearing roll or something like that. But it's still a pain in the ass because I have to totally disassemble both um, rear hub. I don't even, I don't know if I have to disassemble the, uh, the control arms or not, but I at least have to get into the, the differential housing uh, in order to pull those shafts. And I don't think, I think I have to pull bearings and shit like that and prefer not to do that. So I went ahead and ordered a, a 14 ounce tube of uh, Redline CV2 uh, red molly grease. And uh, we're just gonna grab a nice grease needle and we're just gonna pump like fucking two ounces of grease into either um, a cup on either side, do all four of them. And uh, just see if that improves things um, because what I, th I think from reading on forum posts that the original um, grease that they put in these CV joints from the factory broke down really easily and it just kind of turns into oil and they've got those cups in there to kind of like contain the grease so it doesn't sling out into the boot. Um, but over time, um, you know, the, the soap base that makes it a grease breaks down, just turns into oil and then runs into the boot and then doesn't lubricate. And I think that's what happened when it sat for 16 something years. Probably also got really fucking rusty. Um, so we're just going to pump some grease in there and hopefully that fixes things. And if it doesn't, um, they'll probably blow up at some point. And when they blow up, I'll just replace the CV shafts. And that is hopefully what's causing our clunk. Cause it's, it's asymmetrical, which to me says it's not a bearing. It's gotta be something that has a one-to-one -one, uh, connection to the wheel, which means you know, if it was a wheel bearing, it would be a lot louder, it'd be continuous because you have a tiny wheel bearing on this big race. So that wheel bearing is spinning incredibly fast uh, compared to the actual wheel. And so a wheel bearing wouldn't be going woo, 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 woo at 45 miles an hour. It would be just going <laughs> making a horrible noise. Um, so I don't think it's rear, rear bearings. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, the rear brakes um, because that wouldn't be causing that vibration. They'd self clearance, it would change with brake pressure. And this is just constant linear, with you know tension on the drivetrain and i've got a similar kind of issue with the jeep and i think it's just i've the torsional um true track i've got or um the true track limited slip uh helical torsional fucking gear um differential i've got in there i think it just makes a fucking racket because i've done everything else to it and it's still doing it unless like one of my you know axle shafts is just fucked in some way or bent or something but anyway um so i'm thinking it's one of those cv shafts uh, and I think it just needs some grease and I think it's just sticky and it's just vibrating because it's got a sticky spot because ain't no damn grease in it. So we're going to grease those up and, um, hopefully a uh, needle fitting is sufficient. And if it's not, then we're going to have to cut the, the boot, um, clamp metal zip tie things off, push the boot back and then just stuff the CV joint, slide the boot back and hopefully not destroy the boot in the process. Cause if we destroy the boot, then I have to buy boots and pull the shafts and disassemble CV joints. And I don't want to fucking do that. And if I got to do that, I'm just going to buy new CV shafts because these things have 100 something thousand, 170 something thousand miles on them. So anyway, I digress, but we're going to do that. And hopefully that should improve the two main bugaboos that I've got. Well, the third one is also the, the thing doesn't shut off and it's probably the little vacuum jobber guy down in there that's on the actual injection pump because it's just getting worse. And it does, it's when the, when it's cold outside, it doesn't work. Uh, the only time it ever really works is if I haven't like braked at all. If I just like coast to a stop and just like, yeah, I got to get in the habit of just using the parking brake uh, to brake the car when parking. Um, and yeah. Oh, also another bugaboo that I still got to get to is I got to get those shifter bushings because I'm like, it's like 60% of the time the parking brake does or parking pull in the transmission does not engage. And I'm pretty sure it's because that shift fork is not moving far enough to really push it out there and so it's just like barely sitting on that on on the the ratchet and it's just like clunking out of there and that can't be good for it uh and additionally that means um i can't re really go anywhere into the upstate and park because every all fucking parking spaces up there are on a hill and i have no parking brake because as you remember the the fucking the latch for that uh broke off so i should probably fix that uh and and you know the parking actual pull on the transmission doesn't work so i can't even get out of the car to you know throw chocks under it which is worrisome so yeah i will need to fix that and that one i don't really have a clear path forward other than going to a junkyard and ripping an entire uh shifter and shift fork assembly out because this one is seized and i really can't guarantee that i can actually pull it out and resurface it because i have to disconnect it from the transmission and snake it out and i don't even know if that's possible so anyway we shall see but we're, we're gonna at the very least we're gonna do injectors and um, grease the, the half shafts and, 
and that should hopefully do something. If it doesn't, I'm gonna cry. All right, today we're going to attempt to grease the CV joint boots. Um, we got four of them. One there, one there, one there, and one there. I can't find conclusive evidence whether or not these are supposed to have gear oil or grease, but grease is not going to hurt them. Um, and if they had gear oil, it's all leaked out because, I mean, just look at the condition of those boots. Um, so anyway, my plan is I'm going to attempt to get these locking rings off of one of these. I'm going to probably try that one or that one, whichever I can actually find the thing used to work on. Um, try and get those lock ring sort of cable tie things off and then try and slide the boot down. And if the boot comes off, no problems, it doesn't start tearing. Uh, we're just going to slide it down and just pack it full of grease, slide it back on, and I've got some stainless steel zip ties and we're just going to put I think I'm going to have to double these up I don't think they will fit uh, around the main can so I think I'll double them up and then do you know two sets on either side I might be able to reuse the small uh, cable ties but we'll probably just use one of these guys and uh, call it good um, actually I have actual proper um, like lock thingies that I can use for one of these if we if you know we actually have to pull like if, if, if we end up calling this foobar part way through um, I have some actual like locking doohickeys from this John Deere that I saved but they're small I, they, I don't think they'll fit on the cans but fit on the small one at the very least um, so we'll attempt that uh, but anywho if it if it ends up that I'm just gonna start ripping boots and I can't get the thing off um, then we're just gonna jam the grease needle in there and pack it full of grease um, ideally you don't want to poke the grease needle in it because it'll kind of act like a bladder and it'll just suck and pull air in there and it'll cause premature wear but I think my boots are already past that point so anyway I'm gonna get greasy and try and do this but before I get do anything I'm gonna clean all the crud off with isopropyl alcohol just so I don't make my life any harder than it needs to be okay so after getting down here and looking at these things um, I have no play in either CV shaft I don't know what I was feeling before but I had some kind of slop um, back and forth which, you know, there should be because, you know, the axle moves. So, yeah, um, just looking at these boots, particularly this one, um, I really do not want to pop those, those rings off and try and move this boot because I am confident I am going to obliterate them. So I am just going to load up my grease gun. It's really the reason I was doing this is because I don't want to have to pull all the red and tacky out of my grease gun and then stick this CV2 in it and then flush it and then have to deal with all that crap. Um... But yeah, I think I think it's going to be much better if I just come in right here in this high part or in the you know the this high part of the boot, um, where it's not going to be you know having stuff sling out of it and where it's not already obliterated and just poke a hole and just come in like as high up here as I can get, as high up here as I can get, and over here and just pump you know about I got 14 ounces of grease so we'll try and shoot for about. I don't know about three per but we'll kind of do it like two ounces at first and then an ounce each um, I think I think I'm supposed to just think you're supposed to put five in there so they're gonna get whatever this tube holds and that'll be the end of the tube and we're just gonna do that you know as best as we can so come in here and here and then try and get another one in over here and that'll be the fun one because of the exhaust I could drop the exhaust I'm not going to though um, and yeah, we're just going to do that because that's a lot less time and effort and I'm not going to feel bad about poking a hole in these boots because I don't think there's not already holes in them. Alrighty, well that's done and I think I was only short like one or two pumps on the grease needle to get all of them. They all should have about 116 pumps. Uh, I used up the whole tube. And if you notice, that's a very good sign. That means that we did actually indeed have oil in there. So those boots have held up and there is oil in there and we have not been running these guys um, raw this whole time. Well, at least not the two outside ones. I think the front ones are pitched in a way that, you know, the stuff doesn't get in the boot. Um, mostly probably because they don't, you know, the, the wheel does this and so the stuff gets thrown and the stuff up here in the axle is fixed to the frame so it doesn't really move. But anyway, these are stuff full of grease now. So, uh, yeah. Um, the fact that the oil came out after about, you know, 80-something pumps means that the grease did, in fact, displace the oil. Um, so that's a good sign, because uh, that means it, it raised the, you know, elevation. Um, yeah. But I guess that's good news, I, th I think. Um, starting to get oil dripping out of this guy. So yeah, there is indeed oil in these. And this stuff... 
It's like the viscosity of motor oil. That's not really, I wouldn't really call that gear oil. And it doesn't smell like gear oil. It doesn't smell like it has like Molly or any of the other um, extreme pressure additives in it. Um, I can smell those, but that's because this, you know, CV joint grease has it and that stuff fucking reeks. Um, but yeah, looks like these are fine and the grease should do greasy things. And uh, we shouldn't have to worry about these until one of the boots fails. But the fact that there is actual clear oil, the stuff is, you know, discolored because it's 37 years old. It has 170 some thousand miles on it, but it is clear and it is in there, which is good. All right, so we drove over to work and back and uh, didn't make any difference on the vibration having those CV joints greased. So it's probably something in the differential. Um, I did count the vibrations and then calculate, you know, wheel circumference based on speed and all that stuff. And I'm getting um, one vibration for every other uh, full revolution of the rear wheel. So, don't know what that means. Probably something in the diff then. Probably some sort of gear, one of the gears that's meshing with, I don't know, a rough spot or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's a hunting tooth design, so I can't really say. Um, but that, it is, whatever it was, it was 21, 21 vibrations every 10 seconds while going about 52 and a half miles per hour. Um, and I did the math, uh, and it worked out that that was one every other rotation of the rear wheel so yeah I, I i i don't know what that would equate to but there's a hint i guess um i'm just gonna say it's a diff bearing or something like that carrier bearing uh, of some shape and flavor or one of the spider gears something like that anyway i digress i'm gonna stop thinking about it and we're just gonna hope that replacing the injectors um smooths it out because maybe it's a driveline thing all righty i got my new injectors in so today is the day we are going to put New injectors in this pig, hopefully. I pray to Jesus that we're gonna get them in today. Um, but yeah, um, the reason why I went with new injectors instead of rebuilding them is threefold. Um, I'm lazy, number one. Um, I have to get in there and I have to scrub and clean and actually rebuild these. Um, it's cheaper, it's actually significantly cheaper to do it and it's not that hard of a job, but uh, I'm lazy and I really don't like fiddling with like important high precision things like this that you can't like damage um so rather just buy brand new ones throw them in and not have to potentially break something um which leads to two um time out of service um if i go to rebuild these and i lose a piece or break something or drop something on the floor and damage it or i end up being delivered the wrong part or something like that the car's dq'd um until i can get it back together because i only have five injectors you can't run the thing without an injector um so yeah and three um, redundancy. If I buy five new or brand new injectors, Bosch OEM, which th those were on, those were less than uh, sixty dollars a piece delivered. I think it was like two seventy five or something net to me for five brand new Bosch injectors. Um, but anyway, a redundancy. I'll have five extra injectors lying around. Uh, one of them is probably bad, and hopefully we'll be able to figure out which one that is. Um, but still, that's four that I can swap back in. Additionally. I can rebuild those whenever I want, and I can get improved injectors. I can get some Monarchs or something like that, put them in there, and maybe up the horsepower out of this thing. And if I do that, and I put them in, and I fuck something up, or they don't work or something, or I just don't like the way that the engine performs, or it shits on my fuel economy, we could swap back in the OEM. So I would just like to have an extra set of injectors lying around. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Um, also, I fucked up my back last week. Um, I think I was from working in the garden and helping my cousin move a couch up two flights of stairs. Um, I like herniated a disc that I herniated like four years ago um, and couldn't walk uh, for like three hours um, the other week, which was terrifying, but I'm mostly back over it now. But anyway, that's the reason why I'm wearing overalls. And uh, pro tip, um, if you're a thick boy like me, don't buy overalls from Tractor Supply. I'm up two sizes from what I normally wear and it's still tight as shit on my hips. Anyway. I digress. Let me get in there and show you um, just what we need to do, because it's really not that hard of a job at all, I hope. I pray. All right, so in order to replace the injectors, all you really got to do is pull these lines off, which I replaced not too long ago, so hopefully they should just come off and not, like, rip and explode themselves. Um, and then it's a 17 millimeter crow's foot. Take each one of these lines off, and then come down in here, take them all off down there. Who the hell fucking flying right over the goddamn top of me? But anyway, 
take all those lines off. You just pull all the hard lines straight off, set it over there, um, get some, I'm gonna take some masking tape and lay it over the front. You can get, you know, some saran wrap or, I uh, probably don't use saran wrap, aluminum foil or something, masking tape, bender's tape, um, just lay it over top, just keep dirt from getting into the injection pump. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you just take those lines off, then take these lines off, and then you just hop on there with a one in 16 or 27 millimeter socket pull the injector out um, and then there is a little um, uh, concave um, heat shield washer thing down in there um, you just hook that out with a um, pick clean the hole up with with a rag um, probably don't spray brake cleaner or carb cleaner in there because you'll get you know pre-detonation um, and you just pull that out take the new injector stick or put a new heat shield down in there stick the new injector and torque it uh, to 70 to 80 newton meter meters which is 51 to 59 foot pounds so i'm going to try and do 52 foot pounds and then sneak it up towards um 59 um, depending on where my hoses end up because i would like those to be oriented correctly and i don't have shims and yeah that's all there is to it um then just put the hard lines back on and the soft lines back on and you're ready to go um i'm probably going to do the soft lines first um but anyway uh that's it nothing more nothing crazy um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna blow this all out with air first real quick just because there's shit all up in here and uh, hopefully I should be able to knock this out in less than an hour. And uh, when I pull these injectors out, I'm going to label them accordingly and stick them back in the box with the inside of the plastic with the little protectors on it that I came with. Um, just so that if it's not obvious which one's bad, I can figure out which is was bad at a later date. Well, I got all of that off and we've been scammed. Um, of course, I have a 27 and a 1 in 16 deep well socket, and both of them have this stupid shit going on inside of them, and I can't actually get it over the return line nipples. Um, so, yeah, if you're doing this, you need a deep well 27 or 1 16 that is at least an inch and three quarters deep um, of actual usable hex or wider. So, yeah, um, I'm going to put some caps over those real quick, and... Uh, I'm going to run to the hardware store and the Vance Auto and uh, just <laughs> hopefully pray to God I can find a deep well uh, the day before Thanksgiving at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which probably um, won't happen because everyone will be closed. But uh, I'm going to give it the college try because I want to get this shit done this weekend and I sure as fuck I'm not going anywhere on Black Friday. All right, we're paying the stupid tax, but we're getting this fucking job done today. Um, we have just picked up an fucking diesel injector socket set from old harbor freight drove 30 miles went to five stores this being the fifth and um yeah no no one sells um one and one sixteenths uh, sockets that'll fit a fuel injector um they're all one and a quarter inch deep and i need to be one and three quarter but we picked up one of these got all the way here and realized i didn't have my damn wallet and i'm 30 miles from home yeah, paying the stupid tax. Had to set up Google Pay and link it to my bank account and my debit card inside of the Harbor Freight. And the woman behind the cash register is a saint. But um, we got that. We paid 50 bucks for it um, because I didn't look up that I, whether or not I needed a special socket or not uh, before I started the job or ordered anything. Why did you come all the way out here into my lane? I got into this lane for you, buddy. Anyway, yeah, we're getting it done tonight fucking 440 lord i started this job at two o'clock all right let's try this shit one more time there you go all five of those are in and torqued that only took me 40 minutes um yeah oh boy they're the easy way to make a whole day disappear i spent the whole morning doing one thing one tedious thing and then i spent the whole afternoon trying to run this down this should have only taken me an hour but anyway i digress um those are in um I'll have some interesting notes. That one was a little rusty coming out, um, but the heat shield came out. That heat shield was stuck to the bottom, so was that one. That one came free, and that one came free. That one has engine oil sitting underneath the heat shield. I don't know how the hell that got there, um, but it was. Don't know if that, like, is leaked down out of here or something, or spillover or something, but it was black oil. Um, everything else looked good. I don't know what that means. That's probably something significant, um, but I'm glad it's cylinder one at the very least. Um, and yeah, everything else looked fine. They're all, you know, really carboned looking, um, but 
I didn't see anything glaringly wrong uh, in any anywhere except for the oil on that one. I'll look that up, but I'm going to stick those Viton lines back on and stick that guy back on there. Um, and then we will uh, we'll leave all of those on top of the injectors um, just cracked. And then we're going to get in the cab, spin it over until we got diesel fuel coming out of all five of those or until it tries to touch off. And then we'll torque all five of those down and hopefully get this uh, fuel system purged of air. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I, I think I may have to bleed this as well once it's actually running. Um, but we should hopefully be able to bleed the whole thing of air and uh, get her running again and go take her for a quick drive and she should hopefully be butter smooth. All right, that is all back in. Got the wheel chock, got her in neutral so I don't have any weird neutral safety switch stuff. And we're just gonna crank it for five seconds or so and then come out and see if we got diesel on it. All right, now that should hopefully be covered in diesel. Mm. I don't know if we actually have anything coming out. Um, you know, why don't I just prime it, actually? That would probably be smarter. Got something moving on that one. Might need to loosen these a bit more. Let me do that. All right, let's try that one more time. Primed it a whole bunch, so hopefully there should be shit everywhere. Yeah. I didn't really see much coming out of there. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I guess, just run the glow plugs and see if it coughs at all. And if it does, then tighten those down. If it doesn't, I'll just tighten them down and then do it again anyway. All right, we're gonna run the glow plug just through the light three times, and then we'll try it. Nothing. I'm just gonna tighten those down and call today then. All right, all of the injector lines are tight. Let's try this one more time. It may still take a while because you know the actual injector itself has to fill up, but we'll see. Hold it to the floor. It's trying. Squeaky belt. Wow. It seems louder than normal. It almost smells like it's detonating. It smells, sounds like it's detonating almost. Seems to be running smoother than normal though. Well, interesting. Well, uh, let me go run her around and see if she cleans up a bit. Well, uh, I just drove her to the end of the road and back and now she's making this noise which is uh, never a good noise. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm a bit scared. That sounds like rod knock. Um, anyway, I didn't do anything crazy, just did a normal pull. So something, something's not right. But it's, it's RPM dependent and uh, it gets louder when I accelerate. Nothing I can do but limp home and hope it's a hope it's a cylinder that didn't seal or something or an injector that didn't seal and not that I just bricked the whole engine. Oh Lord, it's always something. All right. I think it's injector four. Um, I just went through and cracked everything and it's immediate noticeable downtick in power on one, two, three, and five and on four, I can get about a sixth 
maybe even a third of a turn out before the performance dips. Um, and then when I close it back up, it stays bad for a while um, before something does something to it. Um, so I don't know what the hell that's about. Um, you know, I'm not noticing, well, maybe she's leaking. But, you know, I did just let it piss all over the place. Um, hmm. Oh, that's interesting. That's a lot of rust. Huh. So, yeah, um, wondering if something's up with that guy. Um, uh, one thing I did notice, uh, when I was taking that one out is that actually the, the carbon mark on the end of the injector was off center. Um, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, but she's running, at, she seems to be running decently, but it's just got that really loud knock uh, that I'm really scared about. And I've already pulled the dipstick and cleaned it a couple of times. And there's no shiny things on there. Good oil pressure. So I don't think we suddenly catastrophically did damage to the engine just because we swapped injectors. Um, yeah. Um, I don't really know uh, what the hell uh, is up. Um, but it seems to be injector four. So I'm going to go do some research. And then I'm probably going to swap an injector back into there. Um, and call it a day. Uh, well, I'm calling it a day here, but we'll probably swap that injector out and see if it improves markedly. And if it does, then we'll just leave that old injector in. And um, that'll just be a def defective one I'll have to send back to Rock Auto. But anyway, um, that is a horrible bookend to a very long day. Okay, people on the internet are saying, uh, well, one person on the internet says that they did an Italian tune-up, a.k.a. they just fucking hammered it, and uh, it went away. And considering I drove this thing three and a half miles and then turned around and then it started doing it immediately um and then i didn't take the thing above 40 miles an hour past that and i really just kind of creeped along at about 30 um i'm thinking it's just air in the line so i'm not going to worry about it for now i'm just going to let the thing sit and cool overnight um because it's definitely coming from the top end it's not coming from the bottom end i get underneath the car i can't hear it i get behind the car i can hear it coming from the exhaust um and up here, it sounds like it's coming from this side, over here, from like down inside the exhaust manifold. Um, so I'm just gonna say it's air in the lines. I'm just gonna let everything sit and marinate. And it's probably just air inside of one of the injectors and I just need to give it an Italian tune-up. I just need to let the thing sit at you know high RPM and get whatever air is in that injector out. And that should hopefully uh, be the end of it because it was running great it, it well the status report when i started driving it one it, it did the idle seemed a little off um the idle was a little bit loud um but the power was basically the same maybe five percent better so anyway i don't know um uh, i think actually you know what fucking i'm gonna do that now and i'll just see if anything happens i'll just drive it up to the, the road and back um and if not then i'm just going to go to bed and not think about this except there's nothing i'm going to be able to think about but this well i just put her in first gear and i didn't even get to the other side of the driveway and it went away so it was just air so i'm just gonna give her a little bit more of the italian tune-up down the road some turn back around and go to bed and have a beer first all right well Whatever that knock was, must just have been air, it's gone now. Italian tune-up did the trick. You know, sometimes you can't actually trust the people on the internet. Um, I don't think this thing is any better than what it was before I did the fuel injectors. You know, I still got just a little bit of poof coming out of there. Um, we'll see how she actually behaves on the road. Um, but still got that little bit of a lope in her. I don't know what that's about. And uh, she still doesn't want to shut down. A little bit better than it was before, but still not great. Anyway, oh, this this day has been an emotional roller coaster. Um, but anywho, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to end this video here because I'm uh, just I'm sick. I'm sick of, of paying attention to things. Um, and this there's probably a, a bead leak on this tire too, which is also interesting because it was down like twice as much as every other tire when I went to put, you know, winter air in them. But anyway, I digress. Um, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, consider giving the video a like. Uh, comment, tell me uh, what else I could do to this thing to try and get some power back. I'm not replacing a timing chain. I'll be frank about that. I ain't doing it. 
And uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see the rest of this um, chaotic uh, saga, then you need to smash the big red button and subscribe. And until next time, I'm out.